Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror thriller film, The Hunt. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a flight attendant, asking a man if he wanted something to eat, while on the flight. The man then awkwardly jokes with her about random things. Then, all of a sudden, a large man walks and drools, bewildered by his circumstances. Everybody on board panics, as the large man stumbles around, except an old man. He instructs everybody to calm down and control the situation. The old man then instructs the large man to lie on his back, and gets a pen from the flight attendant. Without warning, he stabs the large man in the neck, and blood spurts out as he screams in pain. The large man tries to fight back. He grabs an empty champagne bottle, and bangs it on the old man's head. Next, he stands up, breaks the champagne bottle, and waves it around, threatening to stab anyone who comes too close. The commotion wakes up a woman wearing a red robe. She slowly walks towards the large man, and lunges a heel shoe piercing his eye, pacifying the situation. The large man drops, and the woman in the red robe instructs everyone to place the large man at the back. She then proceeds to grab her high heel shoe back, taking the large man's eye along with it. She calmly removes the eye socket, cleans the shoe, and walks back to bed as if nothing happened. The old man recovers and returns the pen to the frightened flight attendant. The old man then drags the large man to a room, and curses at the large man before closing the sliding door. The large man breathes his last breath less than a minute later. On the other hand, the blonde wakes up in a forest with a gag on her mouth. She tries to unbuckle the kinky contraption, but discovers that she can't remove it due to a lock at the back. She stands up and assesses the situation. At the nearby pond, she spots Brunette removing a pin from a name tag, and rubbing it against her hair. Brunette then places a leaf by the pond, and places the pin on top of the leaf, making out a compass. The blonde tries to call out to her, but Brunette just ignores her and heads north, Later, Blonde spots another man walking to a nearby clearing, and cautiously follows him. As she arrives at the clearing, she sees multiple people with gags in their mouths, and a large wooden crate in the middle of the field. A man wearing a black hat approaches the wooden crate, grabs the crowbar next to it, looks around, and tries opening the large crate. An elderly man, who appears to be a veteran, warns Black Hat not to open the crate, thinking that it might be a trap. Black Hat ignores the veteran, and proceeds to break open the wooden crate. The veteran runs away from the box. Blonde and everybody else does the same. From a safe distance, everybody observes Black Hat as he successfully removes part of the box. Then, a piglet wearing a cute brown dress emerges from the wooden container, puzzling everyone at the bizarre sight. Black Hat then sees something in the box and begins dragging it out. To their surprise, it's a rack with all sorts of weapons. Everybody runs towards it, and begins picking out their weapon of choice. Blonde, on the other hand, spots a wooden platform with keys taped to it. She picks it up, and unlocks the gag of the tall guy, then she asks the tall guy to return the favor by doing the same. The tall guy then hands out the key, and everyone helps each other remove the gag. Veteran gives Blonde a pistol, and later, the tall guy teaches Blonde how to use the pistol. Not soon after, gunfire echoes, and the group looks in the direction of the sound. The second shot hits the wooden crate. Everyone realizes that they are being fired at, and runs to take cover. Blonde exclaims that it was a close shot, and just as she said that, a bullet hits her in the head, killing her instantly. Blood splatters at a tall guy, who's taking cover next to Blonde. Tall guy acts quickly by taking cover at the other side of the wooden crate, and spots the shooter at a bunker, many meters away. At the same time, an insane man runs towards the shooter, firing the rifle in each hand. As expected, the insane man gets hit twice and drops dead. Meanwhile, a tall guy sprints across the open field while being fired upon. He runs in the noisy girl's direction, asking for help. He arrives and sees the noisy girl with spikes punctured through her stomach and legs. He pulls her out, and tries to carry her to safety, only to mess up when he accidentally steps on a landmine. Boom! Rest in pieces, tall guy. Despite the messy situation, Beard Guy tries to check if anyone's still alive after the explosion. He sees noisy girl's upper body at the spike pit, guts hanging out. Noisy Girl grabs Beard Guy's pistol, and shoots herself in the head. After a Beard Guy crawls to the safety of a nearby ditch, he stands up and runs deep into the forest. Later he ends up in a barbed wire fence, and tries to look for other means of escape. Later, Black Hat, Tattoo Guy, and Redhead arrive and join Beard Guy by the fence. Redhead takes off her jacket, covers the barb so that her ass doesn't get hurt as she climbs across. They all safely climb across, except Black Hat. An arrow pierces his back through his chest, but spares his balls. 
Beard Guy tries to be positive, and encourages Black Hat to climb to their side of the fence. Thinking that he wouldn't make it to the other side, he tries to fight back by shooting randomly, but it doesn't end well for him. He gets struck by an arrow two more times, and then a grenade rolls in front of him. It doesn't explode because the one who threw the grenade, forgets to remove the pin. Another grenade is thrown, and this time it explodes. A bit of an overkill for a man on the verge of death. The trio who made it to the other side of the fence, come across a gas station. Running the store, an elderly couple which they hold at gunpoint. The elderly man offers the beard guy some money, and asks the trio to leave them alone. The beard guy explains that they don't need the money, and asks which state they're in. The elderly woman informs them that they are in the state of Arkansas, and hands the beard guy a phone as he asks for it. The beard guy dials 911, and explains the situation to a clueless dispatcher. Meanwhile, the redhead eats a snack from the stall. It turns out that the snack, as well as the rest of the food in the store, is laced with poison. Redhead and the others discover it the hard way. The redhead struggles, and foams of saliva exit her mouth. Beard guy then looks at the elderly couple, and sees them in a gas mask. The elderly woman then throws out a poison grenade, while the elderly man grabs a sawed-off shotgun from under the desk, and blasts the beard guy, killing him instantly and burning his beard to ashes. The elderly man then approaches the tattoo artist, and strikes him in the untattooed face with his shotgun. The elderly woman turns on the vent, and it sucks the poisonous gas out of the store. After the carnage, they clean up the store, and wait for their next victim. A while later, Brunette enters the gas station store and buys a pack of cigarettes. She then gets the smelly cash hidden in her private part, and gives it to the elderly woman. After handing out the change to Brunette, the elderly woman informs Brunette that she's in the glorious state of Arkansas. As Brunette checks out the change, she grabs the elderly woman's head, and bangs it on the desk. She then hastily jumps over the counter, grabs the shotgun hidden below the desk, and shoots the elderly man at point blank. She turns back, points the gun at the elderly woman, and explains that a pack of cigarettes in Arkansas only cost $6 before killing her. Later, she takes cover behind a bush, and spots a drone flying overhead. Next, the drone is gunned down by Hobo, and he proceeds to the nearby truck. Burnett warns Hobo that the truck is rigged, and informs him that she's friendly. Not soon after, they go over the train tracks, and follow where it leads to. Hobo tells Burnett that he once read an article about a bunch of elite liberal folks, who kidnap normal people and hunt them for sports called the Manor Gate. He believes that it's what happens to them right now. Moments later, they hear a train coming, and run in the same direction that the train is headed to. Brunette boards an open train cart, and assists Hobo in boarding. Hobo thanks Brunette for the assistance. Not a dull moment passes by, they soon discover a bunch of illegal Arab immigrants in the same cart. Hobo suspects them of being actors, believing they are a part of the messed up plot in which they are involved. The train stops, and the immigrants along with Hobo and Brunette, hide immediately. Soldiers with dogs then inspect the cart, and order everyone in the cart to get out. Brunette instructs Hobo to ditch the gun and surrender, or they're dead meat. The soldiers frisk the immigrant, but ignore the other two. Hobo approaches the commanding officer, and tells him that he's an American, and that the immigrants are actors who are part of Manorgate. As the soldiers walk away, the immigrant Arab then speaks perfect English in an American accent, telling Hobo that he thinks the soldiers didn't believe him. So Hobo calls out to the soldiers, shouting that none of this is real and everybody is just part of Manorgate. The soldiers look back, and think of him as crazy and move on. The Arab then explains to Hobo that he was pretending to be an immigrant as a cover, and that the immigrants and soldiers were all real. The Hobo angrily glares at the Arab, tackles him, grabs a grenade from the Arab's bag, and inserts the live grenade into the Arab's pants. Hobo then goes in the train cart, and goes to the other side of the train to escape. Meanwhile everybody takes cover as the Arab struggles to remove the grenade from his pants, and a few seconds later, the Arab blows himself to smithereens. Blonde ends up in a refugee camp in Croatia, where she reunites with a fellow hunted American, the veteran. Later, a man who appears to be a representative of the United States Embassy, bails them out of the refugee camp. Later, they are driving on the way to the supposed embassy. After explaining everything, Black Suit recaps the situation, and informs them that they will get the military involved, and put a stop to the insane bloodbath. Later, Brunette literally kicks out the man in a black suit out of the moving car. She then moves over to the driver's seat, puts the car in reverse, and drives over Black Suit crushing his head. The veteran screams in the background. She gets out of the car, grabs Black Suit's gun and opens the trunk. Meanwhile, the veteran sorrowfully screams at Brunette for her action, but understands right away after seeing Hobo's dead body at the trunk. 
after taking into account everything, they figure that they are the only ones left. During the night, one of the elitist liberals goes out of the bunker, and goes into the woods to take a piss. The veteran calls out to him while holding a pig for a picnic. Brunette then slashes a knife at his neck, which surprises him. Another one bites the dust. Back at the bunker, Sergeant, who was hired as a consultant for Manorgate, instructs everyone in the bunker to stay alert, as he hears something on top of the bunker. Their attention is at the entrance to the bunker. All of a sudden, the picnic pig drops out of nowhere, and they begin shooting at it in panic. After emptying their clip, one of the elitists, Curly, drops to her knees as she mourns the death of an innocent pig. While Curly mourns for the pig, Macho Man, another elitist, scolds his ally, Eyeglasses, for almost hitting him. As he said that, a part of his head chunked out, as Brunette shot him from the back. A shootout then ensues. Eyeglasses try to escape from the shooting window of the bunker, and get hit at the back, while the old man empties his clip and drops his gun. The sergeant slowly approaches Brunette's position, then all of a sudden, Brunette redirects sergeant's pistol, misses a shot at the old man, pistol whips sergeant, and shoots him point blank. A few seconds later, an arrow strikes the nearby wooden post. Brunette returns her gaze, and notices Curly knocking her bow. Brunette then grabs the arrow and power slides in front of her. She stabs Curly in the stomach with the arrow she shot earlier. A rifle lies on the ground between the old man and Brunette. Brunette does a combat roll and grabs the rifle. Brunette then kicks his balls hard, smashes him with the rifle. As she points the rifle at the elitist fiend, he removes the magazine. Brunette checks the chamber and sees a round. She pulls the trigger and kills the old man. Next, she grabs the sniper rifle, sights on the limping eyeglasses, and shoots him at the back. The action doesn't stop there. The sergeant then tackles her, but she manages to beat him to death with a steel pipe. After all the action, the veteran arrives. In a plot twist, the mastermind behind all this, radios in for the veteran. Brunette shoots the veteran after concluding that he is not one of them. Flashback a year ago, the mastermind was let go from her job, after their group chat got leaked. The mastermind and some friends were joking about killing people at the manor, and it backfired on them. It infuriates her, and so the mastermind and her friends thought that they should make the rumors of Mannergate into reality, the same rumors that made them mess up their lives. About eight months ago, the elite people that got let go of their respective jobs, were discussing who to include in their hunt. Back to the present, Brunette arrives at the manor. The mastermind instructs Brunette to leave at the mailbox, or she'll blow her to pieces using the C4 planted at the gate beforehand. Brunette enters the opulent mansion, and at long last, she sees the mastermind. The mastermind is cooking something while she explains the reason. She did everything. Brunette claims that because she and the mastermind share the same name, she has the wrong person. Moments later, a fast and furious fight ensues between the two, and that ends with the mastermind dead. But before she dies, she asks Brunette if she truly was the wrong person, and Brunette answers honestly that yes, she had got the wrong person. The movie ends with Brunette boarding the plane with a champagne, a gun in one hand, and a dog in the other. She orders the pilot to take her home and asks the flight attendant if she had ever had caviar before. The flight attendant replies that she hasn't, and so Brunette tells her to eat the caviar while she drinks the champagne. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.